Hello, this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. Today I would like to create an autumnal birthday card and I would like to turn this into a stepper card. I haven't quite thought through yet how many steps I want in this card, but today I want to create the backgrounds and I want to leave those to dry. I've got about half an hour to spare before I need to go to work. So if I say go to work, that is go downstairs into my pub behind the bar. But I already know, and I just wanted to show you this, I already know that I'm going to use this stamp set here. This is from Visible Image. It's the Totally Toadstool stamp set. I only got that yesterday. I ordered it because it was a good, at a good price point. I had my eye on it for a while, and I think this goes really nice with an autumn theme. I have also bought the um, coordinating dies, and I have bought hoping that I haven't mislaid them before the coordinating dies for the squirrel set because I've got the squirrel stamps but I don't think I had bought these before I just couldn't find them recently anyway so uh, this is what I want to work with but as I said today I would just like to create some backgrounds to use and for that I would like to use the ink swooshing uh, technique I have just got for that a piece of packaging. This is just some foil something got delivered in. There are different ways of doing it. You can use different surfaces as long as this is waterproof and the ink doesn't seep into this. You can use any size. I, to be honest, I've never worked with a smaller piece like this before. I have done it on a bigger map mat. So we need to turn this round so it's all smooth. Um, but I have artists, sorry, yeah, artists on uh, YouTube do that, see, do that. So uh, I think I'll give it a go. I have chosen some water reactive inks uh, with autumnal colours. So I've got the Lavinia Elements Sundance. I've got the Paprika and the Truffle. And then because I don't have an orange yet from the Elements range, I have got the Distress Oxide Carved Pumpkin. And all you need for that is you need a water bottle as well, or any way of applying water. And what you just do is you dab your ink pads on there. If you don't want any contamination, be careful that these don't touch each other or start with the lightest colour, ideally. This can get messy. I've just done my fingernails, so I'm contemplating whether I should put my gloves on. I think I will do that in a moment. This one's very juicy. You can obviously just put the colours on individually and apply them, but I like to put them all on at the same time and then come back in if I need to. So let me just put some gloves on. I'll be back in a sec. So I have two pieces of cardstock on the side. This is a bit of an experiment today because I want to use up my yellow cardstock and this is sort of like a darker yellow. So I'm going to do this technique on the white and on the yellow. So I see how far the yellow comes shows those colours. So what I'm doing now, I'm going on spritzing water onto this piece here. And I don't really want the shape of the pad to show oh by the way this is a 220 gsm i think this one's slightly heavier so you want a bit of a heavyweight cardstock but because i already know that i'm going to dry emboss it later i'm not too worried but what i will do is just move the color around a bit to get rid of those oval shapes trying not to mix them too much already So I'm starting with a white sheet, the other one all the way. And all I'm doing is now I'm turning this over. You can put the cardstock onto um, the uh, film here rather than doing it the other way around. Because I don't know, it just hasn't picked up just now. It actually was running quite a lot. This way you've got a bit more control and you can see a bit better where you're putting it. So I'm just lifting it off now. It's a bit of a hot mess at the moment. 
think they have already blended a little bit too much but what I can do now is I'm getting some tissue to blob that up a bit and then I'm also using my heat tool on it because if you dry it in the meantime the sort of patterns will stay and then you can apply a second layer on top so I have dabbed the puddles off a little bit. Quite often they appear on the edge as well. And I have just heat set this a little bit so it sings in. I know this is very wet already. But I now want to go in with a few more distinct colours. First of all, I think I need to cover this a little bit more. But the way of doing that is to just use less water. You saw I had a lot of water. So and I definitely want to have more red. So I'll just show you now how to put on just the individual colours. So I'm just dabbing this around a little bit and just adding a little bit of water. There's still some water left on here. So I'll show you now the difference. If I just apply this now with less water, just the individual colour, I can leave more distinct patterns. Again, this is nicer using this because I've got a bit more control where it ends up. If I've got the paper on top and the foil underneath, I don't see where I'm applying it. So it's really for you to have a play around. I find this very therapeutic just to do that. So I know I want a bit more yellow here and I might give the brown actually a miss because that makes it a bit too muddy. So I might stick with the more juicy colours. So I'll go in with a bit of more of orange as well. So I do this off camera now, but I will also do it on the yellow and I'll just show you the results. Yours will definitely look different. It always depends on the water content, on the inks, on the paper, but just have a play with it because whichever way it turns out, by the moment we use it, um, because we were die cutting from it, there will be areas that you really will like. And because I also want to dry emboss on it, it will look completely different afterwards anyway. I just thought I'd pop in again whilst I'm creating the yellow panel, because as I said before, there are different ways of doing this. So with this one, I just set down the yellow before. I went in with the orange. So I just wanted to show you how I created this pattern, which is a bit less wet and a bit more distinct. So I'm just generously putting the ink down here as before. I'm spraying it with my water and then just spreading this out a little bit quite randomly actually but then the puddles make their own pattern anyway and rather than laying the whole panel down I can actually fold this up a little bit and just let bits of it touch the paper can you see what I'm doing so as I said before I've got a bit more control where I'm putting the paper down uh, sorry the foil down and can go to the edges I've found a little bit where it's still wet it won't necessarily absorb the next layer. So if you want to be sure to have a next layer and it's very wet, just dry it in between with your heat tool. It only takes a minute or so. But this is just so much fun. It's a bit like being a child again and getting really messy in the mud. But the effect is great. And it looks as it looks very messy at the moment. But what we're creating later and what we're using it for will be just fabulous so yeah I just wanted to show you this so with this one I might actually go in with a brown or I'll have a look whether I might even introduce a sort of pink I think this one needs another layer because the yellow sort of disappears so I'm back it is a few days later and I have crafted a bit off camera apologies for those who like to watch me do things, but I will talk you through now what I have created off camera. So first of all, I have die cut circles from my cardstock, from the ink swoosh cardstock. So these circles are, this is just for mine. It, you can choose different sizes. I've just chosen the nesting dies I do have. One wasn't even part of the set, the biggest one. 
so I have um, cut circles that are four inches three and a half and three and one quarter you see the difference is uh, not even the same between those and this is you just you need one set per card but I'm making two cards so one with a yellow background and one with a white background and then I have also cut three circles each to mat these because I thought these are actually quite bold and I've chosen this cream colored cardstock and the circles I have cut let me get this back here are three and a half three and one quarter and two and three quarters and I have put these through an embossing folder which is this one I thought this would look nice for the autumn theme if that is from Amazon which I believe I will link to it below if not it might be from China and then I don't like linking to these things so I've cut all these then I have also cut the shadows for this happy birthday die from the same pattern cardstock and then just the happy birthday sentiment in white just to tame it down a little bit so, and then I have created my own ephemera I have used as intended the toadstool set sorry this sticks together so I have chosen just the big a mushroom and these two and the tiny little ones here and at first I thought I might combine this with a snail but I decided to use the squirrel and the acorns and that leaf instead reason being because I recently bought the dies for this and it wasn't until a few weeks ago that I realized how thoroughly I enjoy stamping and then die cutting the pieces to make my own ephemera this is something i had to discover for myself that i really really enjoy that i just wanted to show you this this is my leftover piece when i did the mushrooms i stamped them on my stamping platform and i have shown you this technique before and i basically took an a5 piece laid out my stamps and then turned over the sheet and stamped the mushrooms in the same place again. I lined up my dies with the stamps on the first lot. I cut this apart actually. And when I had done that, I could just leave these on the first piece of cardstock. I always put the tape on the outside and then lay it over the second piece because I had stamped them in the same position I could die cut this basically use the first layer as a template put the other piece underneath just align it and then cut it through like this i will link to a video below where i explain that a bit in more detail and actually show it um it's one of my first videos i think i've got on this channel but this really helps for multiple die cutting so the other thing i did off camera is coloring these in I just used my um, dies, my um, ink pads for dies, yeah, my and my ink pads for these. I used various from the Lavinia elements and some distress oxides, and I just put the ink on an acrylic block on the side. Uh, used a bit uh, with from my water bottles, just sprayed a little bit, and then just used a normal ordinary brush, and just coloured these in. And I tried to get a bit of shading in by using different colours. Oh, I also used um, this little ink pad. That's a memento one, desert sand. The important thing for that technique is that um, they are water reactive because you basically use them like watercolours. And as I said, I tried to get a bit of shading in. So I used for the for the mushrooms, I used the this desert sand here. I used a bit of vintage photo and I also came in with a Lavinia Elements truffle. And then for this mushroom again I had the variation here and then the top one here that's actually I think the candied apple. I've only got the re -inca. What happened though I decided to use some glossy accents over these. I've never really used glossy accents before and because the ink is water reactive um, what I had left wide now is a sort of light pink, but it doesn't really matter. And I've just put it on this one that I haven't um, 
put enough glossy accent on this bit but it doesn't really matter so that's the first time i've used it but i think the effect is really nice and enhances these pieces the only things i haven't used the glossy accents on is these leaves and i haven't used it on the um scribble here i just used this is this really cheap dove craft and um, 3d pearl effect effects black um I don't even know what you call it, you know, like liquid pearls, just for the eye and the nose there. Now let this all dry for 24 hours, so these are ready to use. Oh, I die cut them first, obviously, and then use the glossy accents, because you don't really want to put them through the die cutting machine once you've got it on, because it might leave some marks. So, that's what I prepared yesterday, and just before filming now, I prepared my card base. This card is based on a video by Sam Calcott and I'm going to link to that below. So the measurements are hers as well and I'm only copying what she's done. And she uses a an 11 by 6 card base, which is good because you can cut it from A4 card stock. And then you score it at 1, 2, 3 and 3 quarters, 5 and a half and 8 and one quarter. Let me just zoom in for you, just in case you want to take a screenshot of these measurements. So I have already scored that, but I haven't folded it yet. So let me zoom out again. So basically what you create is a stepper card. So the first score line is a mountain. And I've just used the same yellow cardstock as before, but this one is for the lighter background. So I'm going to be using that one with the yellow. And because this one's so bold already, I'm going to tame that down with the white, I thought. Looking at it now, though, I'm having second thoughts whether I actually want that. I'll have another look how I combine this, because I didn't want to combine it with the yellow, so I thought this would be too much. Mm. Anyway, I'm going to fold this quickly and I'll show you how to fold this and then I'll have another think. Maybe I swap them around after all. I'm a bit limited with colours at the moment. I've got lots of this yellow, that's why I'm using it. Um, and I thought this would be brighter when I ordered it online. I never got hold of this little cardstock that everyone's talking about. So I haven't got any of that. So it's a mountain, a valley another mountain just burnish them thoroughly another valley and i'm using it's, it's about 220 gsm it's up to you really what weight you want but you don't want this to be too flimsy because then it won't stand up so and another mountain there so basically if i just press these down again now you end up with these three steppers and you can some calcot did that you can put some stoppers in here if yours gets too um too wide and wants to pull out like that but because i've got the heavy card weight cardstock i think this is fine so and all that's left for me to do is now to basically adhere the circles so i'm going to mat them first and then the idea is to move them a bit to the side so put this one like here this one a bit further to this side and i'm even contemplating some calcot didn't do that but i might actually take a little bit off at the bottom but i don't know yet the important thing is definitely for my post as well that i don't go over the edge because I, this is six inches wide and i want to put it in a six by six envelope same with the height but i know i'm going to be fine there so I basically want to align this on this side and then the last one will go here. And then my idea is to put in the embellishments. They can even go on the front here, but I might just put smaller mushrooms there. I'll have a think about that. I don't think I will show you how I'm gluing them down. I'm just using my collal glue for that. And yeah, as I said, I'll have another thing whether I might actually leave the yellow on this one and use the white cardstock for that one. So I will do this all off camera. 
just noticing here maybe with the embossing folder I will pay attention to the direction a little bit although it's that doesn't really matter so this is the overall idea so again as I said I will do this off camera and then I'll show you the finished cards I have almost finished my cards just because I want to add something to this one so I'll show you the layout from the first one I think I will put some footage or at least a picture uh, at the end of the video how they look standing up because it's a bit difficult to catch here but as you can see I placed the squirrel here then the big toadstool there and a few mushrooms some leaves there in the back and the happy birthday just on the top there and uh, yeah I'm really pleased with this one here so when it stands up the recipients let me just see if I can show you that they will see it sort of in layers from above and I think this is really really nice and it stands up by its own it doesn't collapse in any way so this is really nice um, you can add the elements onto these circles before you stick the circles onto the card uh, or you can that's what I did for the first time I stuck the circles down and then added the embellishments just seeing what overlaps not trying to hide too many things that's why I put the squirrel here in the front I did it different on the second card and I'm not so sure I like this one that much so with this one it doesn't matter with the mushroom being in the back because it's not that great of a motif but definitely the toadstool needed a prime place as well so yeah so I'm really happy with them, that one. Obviously, remember when you stick down the circles and the embellishments not to have any glue where they don't touch anything. So some of these are not fully covered. And by the way, I used my Cosmic Shimmer Glue in the end. Um, the, my Colal bottle, I've decanted it, wasn't really cooperative today. So I dismissed that idea. So for the second card, I tried to move it around a bit, but this one I started here on the left and then made my way to the right and then to the back. And I thought I'd just put the scroll in the second row there, but even though the recipient looks from the top, it is a bit covered. The nose is a little bit covered. I maybe could have moved it back a little bit. So I'm not so sure about this layout. And I was stuck with a little uh, mushroom here that I then just put on the front here. I maybe should have just kept that one off and kept it a bit uh, bare at the front. But for the back, because I need this for a 70th birthday, I cut from the same background, I cut the 70, and this will go here in the back. The only reason why I haven't glued this down yet, and again, I probably have to move it in a little bit because the oak leaf here is sticking out. So unless, yeah, unless I have a wider envelope, I should have thought about that before I glued that down. But I want to use some glossy, um, glossy accents on the 17. This is why I haven't stuck it down yet, because then it's difficult to lay it flat. So I will do that afterwards and then I just put this glossy, I put the glossy accents on first. So, yeah, that's my two cards nearly finished. If you like these cards, you might want to give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of what I'm creating, I post videos at least twice a week. You might want to subscribe to my channel. I'd be very happy about that. And I'll see you soon with another video. Just popping in again, I just thought if you've never used glossy accents before, um, as I said, I'm not an expert. I'm sort of starting on this now at the moment. So all you need to do is put down the glossy accents and then I'm just using a pokey tool and spread this out to the edges and then this needs to dry at daily 24 hours if not more just make sure it's not tacky anymore so don't put on too much and also make sure if you've got any bubbles I'm okay at the moment you can burst them there's a little one there so just prod that a little bit until the bubble disappears so don't move it about too vigorously you then will create more bubbles.